For a thousand years had they fought and died, certain of the justice of their cause. Only to be told that their holy war was born of the sins of their forefathers. Through gates long closed, the warrior of light and her companions passed. Devoted to Halone, the Fury, the last bastion of the faith, had forgotten what it was to be at peace. Welcome to another job guide framed at Paladin beginners that want to start as gladiator or switch over from another job. Or for those that have returned after a long break and want to get back into shield and sword devastation. So without further ado, let us begin with the crux of the Holy Swordsman's battle system, the Gladiator's basic kit. Starting with Fast Blade followed by Riot Blade on level 4, you can strengthen up your melee damage output with the help of Fight or Flight learned at level 2. And until level 26 you're using these abilities in alternation. Then with Rage of Halone being added to your skill pool, you gain access to the standard 3 button combo. But don't worry, this will change significantly later on. On level 15 you also gain access to Shield Lob, a great tool to pull enemies together or when sprint pulling pack after pack in dungeons. Yes, Shield Bash is a skill that we actually never use, only if you find yourself in a very dangerous situation and need stunning potential to calm down some of your opponents. Coming to the Paladin, which is unlocked upon reaching level 30 and here you already gain access to your first OGCD attack in the form of Spirits Within. Always use these off-global cooldown abilities during the global recast timer caused by your normal weapon skill attacks. Spirits Within is stronger when you're at max HP, but you should not be too concerned about that fact, just use it whenever it fits to your rotation. But of course, if you know that your healer will max you out soon, you can save it unto that moment. While learning tons of defensive abilities that we will cover later, you also gain access to Circle of Scorn on level 50, another OGCD attack used in between your usual weapon skills, which applies a damage on time effect to all enemies hit and should also be used against single targets unless you certainly know that hitting more than one target is possible very soon. On level 54 you will learn Goring Blade and this is the point where you will never use Rage of Alone again, because Goring Blade not only being simply stronger, but also applying a dot onto your target, which is insanely powerful and when applied to multiple enemies, it can even outperform your AoE rotation under some circumstances, so always try to line up this application with your fight or flight so that the dot is empowered by its 20% boost. Then on 60 you will learn the pendant to this in the form of Royal Authority. Now things change a bit as you will always use the Goring Blade direction when your dot is not yet applied or is about to fall off in the next seconds. Otherwise you will always finish off this combo with Royal Authority. But remember, whenever you're facing more than one target, applying Goring Blade to multiple targets can still outperform the raw damage advantage of Royal Authority. This procedure and battle plan remains until you reach level 68, but before talking about your magical rotation and skills, let me complete your melee kit. Upon reaching level 74, you will gain access to Intervene, your gap closer, that helps you reclaiming some proximity to your target that you may have lost due to certain knockback effects or the boss just walking away from you. Otherwise, this can also be used in pulling situations for addressing a specific target that stands far away from the pack or to win some miles in advance. Finally, on 76, you gain access to Atonement, which is a follow-up attack to your Royal Authority that makes your alternation between Royal and Goring Blade much more interesting, because after smashing in a combo-activated Royal Authority, you earn 3 stacks of Sword Oath, where each stack is used for one Atonement attack. These attacks don't run under your normal combo, so you can use them whenever you have Sword Oath stacks remaining. Use this advantage to work out your rotation in the best way for each boss or check out my comprehensive guide for learning about rotations. But before doing so, let us head over to the magical rotation that in theory is unlocked by gaining access to Holy Spirit on level 64, but actually makes sense on level 68 when learning Requiescat. This OGCD attack does not only deal magical damage, but will also increase the effectiveness of your magical skills by 50% for its 12 second duration. But this only works when using Requiescat with at least 80% of your MP remaining, so make sure to never use it below 80% of MP which also inclines that without this 50% boost using magical skills without Requiescat doesn't make much sense, except you need urgent healing through clemency or use Holy Spirit to pull enemies. That means you should use 5 magical attacks inside of the Requiescat duration and after that return to 2 or 3 cycles of your melee combo. Here you can use Fight or Flight as the perfect indicator to lead you into solid timings as it doesn't affect your magical skills. 
And furthermore, upon reaching level 78, your magical attacks also turn into instant casts. But even before that moment, they provide a solid DPS advantage over your melee combo. Finalized on level 80, you gain access to Confidio, that not only is a devastating blow with 800 potency to your target, but also deals this damage onto enemies around it. So your 5 Holy Spirits should now merge into 4 plus that one Confidio. And above all that, note that you can perfectly use this magical set for bridging some distance that enemies naturally create under certain boss mechanics or fighting situations, where the Paladin literally shines. And that's basically it. And as Riot Blade and Atonement also grant MP, make use of switching between your melee and magical rotation, according to their signal attacks like Rick Rescat, that you need 80% MP for at least, or Fight or Flight that should be lined up with your Goring Blade, Atonement attacks and signal the turn over into your magical rotation when it has worn off. For AoE damage things are quite similar. Use your Total Eclipse that you already learn on level 6, followed by Prominence on level 40. And those will be led by the Fight or Flight Assault mixed with your Circle of Scorn and Spirits within. Followed or sighted by Requiescat leading into your Holy Circle, which is the AoE version of Holy Spirit upon reaching level 72 finishing the pack with Confidia on level 80. Just remember to not waste potential targets for it due to their early demise. Dungeon packs are dealt with in insanely fast manner sometimes. The last section focuses on the Paladin's defensive tools and believe it or not, this is the best selection a single job can have in this game, turning the Paladin into the most versatile powerhouse in every situation. Starting with its tanking stance on level 10. Use it whenever you think other tanks don't want to take up their responsibility or just try out some communication that is fruitful in this game anyways. In content with a single tank only, just keep it active all the time. On the mitigation side of things you gain access to Rampart, reducing incoming damage for yourself or Reprisal to reduce damage dealt by enemies, followed by Arm's Length to reduce their attacking speed or protect yourself from knockbacks or pull effects followed by your Oath Gate, which is filled by your auto attacks and gives you access to either Sheltron on level 35 or Intervention on 62. The first shielding you up from incoming attacks, reducing their damage, while the later reduces damage of the selected target party member. So it is a simple decision of targets other than the way how to do it. The only difference is that Intervention gets stronger if your Rampart or Sentinel is active, where Sentinel is learned at level 38 and provides a very strong protection of 30% damage reduction to yourself. On 56 you also learn Divine Veil, a protective barrier upon your party that is triggered when you heal yourself or get healed by others. Sometimes I really do believe that this is a highly underestimated skill, so please make sure to use it frequently against raid busters or when waves of damage are about to hit you or your party. Last but not least on the mitigation section we have Cover, which will let you take the damage another party member would receive and redirects that damage onto yourself. Beware that this doesn't work for all attacks but can be very useful to avoid certain mechanics or keeping healers alive and this also costs 50 gauge points. The next could easily fall into this category as well but it features our or shit button in the form of hallowed ground. This divine shield like ability renders you immune to most attacks while having a fairly long cooldown. Being a blast to reduce incoming threats from big packs of mobs or to avoid certain boss mechanics by just not receiving any damage. So use this wisely but use it. Keeping it for an eternity will waste its potential. Coming to the last category, defensive tools that are sacrificing damage. First up we have Passage of Arms, which is a channeled defensive barrier creating a safe zone behind you mitigating incoming damage for all people standing in it. This is a very awesome tool to use when there will be damage and the boss is not targetable. But note, this will cancel auto attacks and each action will cancel the channel effect. So my tip is to shortly use it during your recast timer if damage is going to land in that moment. Otherwise keep it for intermission phases or when mitigation is strictly required or demanded from your group strategy. The kinda same goes for the best healing tool for non-healers, Clemency. With this you're definitely able to heal up yourself like a healer could do, especially when running Requiescat. But as this consumes a whole global cooldown of possible attack potency plus spending MP that could be used for Holy Spirit or Precious Requiescat duration, always use this ability with caution. Because otherwise healers could get angry. But like I always claim, a living tank is better than a full DPS optimizing one that died due to his immense greed. So always keep in mind that this ability can be your life insurance. And that's it my friends. I hope this little overview and basic explanation could help you in getting a basic clue about the paladin and if you really want to polish your knowledge to shine bright like a diamond, check out my comprehensive or 5 minute guide, as well as checking out the balanced discord. 
Thanks a lot for spending some time with this video and if you liked it, consider subscribing to this channel or checking out another video. Above that, I have created a second channel, so if you're interested in videos about other games or other sort of content, I would love to meet you there. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy.